We are scientists. Our solutions are sustained by science, but our visions are propelled by entrepreneurship and innovation. We are hard tech entrepreneurs. We are disruptors. Investment in the hard tech is outpaced by software tenfold, but our ambitions for innovation is outpaced by nothing. We have a taste for pioneering sustainable technologies that will disrupt legacy industries. We are on a mission to digitalize, automate, and revolutionize core business processes and help make our world a more sustainable place. We are creating molecules for sustainable plastic alternatives. We are building connecting networks for industrial job sites. We are developing sustainable concrete mixes from local waste using smart algorithms. We're establishing a platform for real-time road quality monitoring and predictive maintenance. We're establishing a real-time permitting insights and compliance technology for large enterprises. We are diverting plastic waste from landfills and reusing it in new materials for the built environment. We are repurposing waste tires into sustainable construction materials. We are transforming industrial waste streams into reusable resources for cars, trains, and plane manufacturers. We are developing smart AI, enabled electrochemical reactors. We are connecting roadway workers to increase productivity and worker safety. We are hard tech entrepreneurs. We are disruptors. We are the Heritage Group Accelerator powered by Techstars class of 2020. Welcome to our 2020 demo day. Join us on our mission to solve some of the world's most pressing challenges. Welcome to the 2020 The Heritage Group and Techstars Hard Tech Accelerator. I'm super excited that you're going to spend an hour of your day with us today, and I'm even more excited to share these amazing founders with you. We've got a long day, we've got about an hour, we've only got 60 minutes here, we're going to pack a lot into it. So bear with us here, I just want to cover, I'm going to get out of the way here in a moment, but I just want to cover a few thank yous before we get started. First off, I want to thank everybody in the Heritage Group. The Heritage Group for the second year in a row has been instrumental, has been incredibly passionate and an extraordinary partner for Techstars. We've been able to pull off a very unique hybrid accelerator, both virtual and live, which hasn't been easy, but we've been able to pull off an amazing 13-week program here for these founders that have given them insight that they couldn't have gathered anywhere else. And it wasn't just from Techstars, but it was mostly from the Heritage Group. And I want to be uh, incredibly appreciative and thankful for all that they've done, specifically Ginger Rothrock. What she did for these founders, being a part of HG, being a part of HG Ventures, her experience, her skill set, what has given her this gift to speak to founders and speak to entrepreneurs in a way that has been truly special and we couldn't have done this without her. I also want to thank Nancy Churchill. Nancy, this has been her first program, my first program, and she has been absolutely critical to the success of this. She has kept the rails or the, the train on the tracks throughout this entire 13 weeks and I couldn't thank her enough. It wasn't easy during a crazy time. We've also got some exceptional ex uh, associates that have been helpful to us too. I want to thank Ryan for being a great lead associate. Couldn't have done it without you, bud. I want to thank Addison, Quentin, Ashton, and all the other people at the Heritage Group that helped us out so much. We had around 80 to 90 mentors that stepped up, spent time, they spent their energy, they gave resources, they shared their network with all of our 10 founders. And without them, this program wouldn't be much. And I want to be especially thankful to the Heritage Group mentors that stepped up. We had about 35 of the total mentors that came from the Heritage Group. And they were amazing. For a founder, for a CEO, an early stage startup CEO, even a late stage CEO, which we have, to get time, to spend time with somebody from procurement, to spend time with a buyer, a CEO, um, somebody from HR, uh, to talk about culture and how to brainstorm virtually. Heritage Group stepped up and gave us amazing time that these founders and myself, we couldn't get anywhere else. So I want to be ext extremely appreciative of that. Um, lastly, I want to thank these founders. What these founders have done for me, for Nancy, for our entire team, and for the Heritage Group, they've shared their journey with us. Even though it was a small 13-week 
part of a really long journey that they have ahead of them. It's an honor to be a part of it. Hello, my name is Kip Fry, and I am the Executive Vice President for New Ventures at the Heritage Group. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome you today to our Demo Day 2020 for the Techstars Heritage Group Accelerator. Obviously, this has been a year filled with many unexpected challenges, and our great team here at the Center in Indianapolis, along with the Techstars Managing Director, Scott Craigie, are extremely proud of the 10 company cohort that we will be introducing you to today. This has been an incredible experience for everyone here at the Heritage Group, and we highly value our partnership with Techstars as we introduce these 10 companies to you and look forward to your interaction with them going forward. Hi, my name is Miriam Speedy, and I'm the CEO of Synthetics, where we're enabling newer, better, and faster chemistry. Chemistry is at the heart of most products we use on a daily basis. These molecules are the building blocks for pharmaceuticals, plants, electronics, cosmetics, and much more. The way that we make these molecules is extremely important. Chemical transformations can be powered by a variety of things like heat, living organisms, light, or electricity. But by far, using electricity is one of the best ways to make molecules. On top of being a lot safer and a lot more sustainable, these transformations are also extremely efficient and enable making new types of molecules that were previously inaccessible. Despite this, Many process chemists today still don't use it. The reason is time. In the business of new chemistry, time is money. And for a lot of these process chemists, trying to figure out how to use electricity to power chemical transformations can be extremely time consuming and take multiple years, which is way more time than they can afford. This is Camila. Camila is a process chemist in pharma and her job is to figure out the best way to make DZ2384. DZ2384 is a new cancer therapeutic with a lot of potential for chemotherapy without the toxicity downsides. Her research leads her to two ways that she can make it. Option one uses heat in a process that is well known and understood, but is also toxic, complex, and leads to a dirty product. Option two uses electricity in a process that is safe, simple, and leads to a pure product, but that she's much less familiar with. Now looking at this, option two is a no-brainer. But what you need to know is that for a lot of these process chemists, trying to figure out how to develop an electrical process is like trying to figure out the recipe for Gordon Ramsay's risotto using only trial and error. That means a lot of trial, but mostly error. After months of trying many different combinations, she is nowhere close to figuring out the right recipe to hit the performance targets that she needs in order to bring this molecule to market. The clock is ticking, so she doesn't have a choice. She turns to the more well-known process despite its many disadvantages. This is a true story for a lot of chemicals that end up being way more expensive, having a very negative environmental impact, or sometimes not even making it to market at all. At Synthetics, we leverage machine learning to turn this trial and error process into a smart and guided approach that gets you the best results in a shorter time frame. Using our technology, process chemists can turn years of development into just a few months. Our product is an electrochemical reactor. It takes in chemicals and electricity to make the desired molecules. It also communicates with a machine learning platform. This platform replaces the need to do hundreds and hundreds of experiments by gaining insights off of small experimental data sets, suggesting the next point and predicting the best optimal point using about 10 times less experiments and therefore one tenth of the development time. This is exactly how we're enabling process chemists to unlock the potential of electrical processes. We developed this in our labs and have done some internal validation with many different reaction environments, as well as scaled our technology 100x. We're currently running external validation alongside a group of talented organic chemists at the Heritage Group, getting us pilot ready by 2021 and sales ready by 2022. In order to support this commercialization strategy, we've already gotten five letters of intent two of which are from Big Pharma, as well as many more interests from a lot of companies in the specialty chemicals and pharmaceuticals industry. We're also working with a distribution partner to support our growth strategy and reach our larger target market. This has been made possible by our amazing team of visionary and passionate founders 
We have extensive background in chemical engineering and electrochemistry, as well as a successful track record deploying sustainable technologies. Our technology has been validated by many different prizes, including the Lemelson Prize and the Brightest AI Minds. We've also been fortunate to work with investors, programs, and mentors to fill the gaps on our team. And we're not stopping there. We're starting with pharmaceuticals, but applying our technology to the rest of the chemical industry, working towards a better future, one reaction at a time. Hello, great to be speaking with you. I'm Patrick, CEO of OnStation, and we provide location-based information for workers on the road, helping them locate, visualize, and communicate. In our world, it all starts with location, and knowing your location is harder than you think. You've probably driven by a construction zone, seen four workers standing around, and thought, come on, why aren't these guys working? Chances are those workers are waiting for information on what to do or where to go next. Find the kitchen sink and a new house being built? Pretty easy. Find the busted guardrail on a four mile long, eight lane wide job site where every guardrail looks like the next? Much harder. Across the US, we spend over $300 billion on 50,000 roadway projects every year. Each project impacts traffic, budgets, and safety. 45,000 workers and drivers will be injured in these hazardous work zones. And currently, there are limited industry-specific tools addressing these problems, leaving workers and project owners struggling to locate themselves, visualize the design, and communicate effectively in the field. To change this industry, we built OnStation. OnStation delivers critical job site data instantly. We do in seconds what takes minutes now, allowing our users to reclaim over 50 minutes a day. Inspired by on-the-job frustration and compelled to make a difference, we went to work. From the Wisconsin DOT field study claiming a 6x return to hitting hundreds of active users on transportation projects all across the country. Year to date, OnStation has impacted the job site over 87,000 times. We are growing in two important ways, by adding new customer projects every month and with rapidly growing user adoption on existing projects. On average, one project expands to 24 users from seven different companies. Fueling this virality, OnStation is the best option for connected communication across all companies on the job. A favorite image of mine is seeing four or five snow plows getting out in front, taking over and owning the road. This image resonates with the culture of our team as we want OnStation to be the leader in this unclaimed market. While our launch focuses on the 50,000 US projects, roadway design, construction and maintenance is a global market. One accessible with a simple download from the app stores. When we own this market and we're in every worker's pocket, OnStation becomes a real-time information sharing and communication platform. One that empowers workers, automates tasks, connects directly with cars and databases every project across the globe. In the last six weeks, we've gone full gas on scaling OnStation to reach our goals and the early results are exciting. We've launched nine new customers with hundreds of potential users. As we land more initial projects, growth and adoption accelerate and propel our AAR into the millions. The current team combines experience in transportation engineering, construction technology, mobile development, sales, and past startups. I'm proud of our diversity and excited to see what we can do with the addition of a few key members. Looking down the road with your help, we plan to automate project creation, provide enterprise level access, launch global sales, and expand into other industries with assets over distance. I thank you for this opportunity. Please reach out if you have interest and think of us as the ones making an impact the next time you drive by a construction zone. Thank you.
10 billion tons of concrete is produced each year. That's enough concrete to cover the US, Canada and Mexico. We spend $530 billion a year on concrete. Architects, scientists and the government have recognised this as a materials crisis. Let's talk more inside. Hi, I'm Liz, CEO at Material Evolution. I grew up obsessed with how things came apart and could be rebuilt. As a child, you could find me with a hammer and wrench. If I couldn't make it come apart, I could always hit it really hard and see what happened. As I grew up, this obsession only continued to grow. But I swapped the hammer and wrench for a lab and I got my PhD in sustainable concrete. I have created concrete used on the Apple campus in Cupertino and at Bloomberg's headquarters back home in London. So I'm the concrete nerd with a background in architecture. Kieran is my brother. He's had the boots on the ground experience in the construction industry. For the last 14 years, he's been overseeing all things concrete. Going back to our days in the backyard or garage, he was always there with me, rebuilding everything. Now we are here together, disrupting the concrete industry. Technology has changed humanity, but we're still making concrete the same way we did 150 years ago. New materials are coming into the market, but there are barriers to adopting these materials. They are not economically viable, they require the industry to retool, or they are complex to scale. This is where we come in. Material evolution is changing the way we make concrete. Our technology transforms the chemistry of cement. To do this, we leverage our expertise and combine this with machine learning, creating concrete that is economical, durable, and sustainable. Machine learning has turned me from a concrete chemist toiling in the lab to a concrete alchemist magically transforming waste materials into ultra high performance concrete. Our first product eliminates the need for cement in any concrete mix. It's made from 95% local waste using our algorithm technology. This allows us to create concrete that is 10 times stronger and five times more durable, reducing the carbon consumption by up to 85%. But most importantly, it's economically viable. It's a no-brainer. So now I've wowed you with the science, let our custom attraction validate our vision. We've proven this works by our three pilot projects. One at the Googleplex in San Jose, another at a leading university in Ireland, and with a city in the UK. All three using locally sourced waste materials identified via our algorithm. Our customers achieve three main objectives while using our product reduce material costs of up to 20%, improve performance, and sustainability that opens up new markets. With proven science, scalable technology, and demonstrated customer traction, this is the next material revolution of the century. We make money every time our concrete is poured. Our technology fits into the industry's existing infrastructure without the need to retool allowing it to rapidly scale across an industry that hasn't changed in 150 years. In a few months, we have generated $85,000 and we've got a customer pipeline that is set for 75 million in just five years. Whether it's the paving used across your city, to the concrete you build your home from, to the future cities you will live in, material evolution, replacing concrete as we know it. Hi, I'm Eric Davis, CEO and founder of Pretread, where we create sustainable construction solutions. It's an honor to be here, and I hope to meet in person someday. So let me share a bit about our story. Years ago, I was fly fishing in the Colorado Rockies when I noticed a pile of waste tires and plastics sitting on the bank. The engineer in me looked at these raw materials and wondered, what can we do to make a difference? What are the products that we could make that would be both high volume and high value? So I got a team of people together, we created some fantastic products, and we formed the company Pretread. And at Pretread, our mission is really simple. 
We're going to rid the world of tire waste by repurposing it into large, sustainable industrial barriers and blocks. So with that said, let me talk to you about the challenge. Every year, the United States generates 300 million waste tires. That's about one tire per person. Additionally, we generate 1.8 billion waste tires globally. Most people probably aren't aware, but the top two utilizations for these raw materials are burning them and burying them. At Pretread, we came up with a new innovative solution and we turned these raw materials into our Pretread Sustainable Industrial Barrier. Each one of our six foot industrial barriers diverts 60 tires from landfill or burning, competes directly with concrete on price, is fully recyclable into itself, so it's fully sustainable, and has a carbon footprint approximately 98% less than concrete. That's a pretty big deal. The U.S. total barrier market size is approximately $1 billion or more, and Pretread is going to achieve a 20% market share as we are the only sustainable alternative to concrete. Our product is going to launch in three distinct phases. Phase one will be our static barrier phase, and that'll cover such applications as rockfall, perimeter, parking lots, mudslide, stormwater management, and more. Phase two will be our low speed barrier phase, and phase three will be our high speed barrier phase. Our customer pipeline is significant, and it's broken down into three distinct sectors. The first sector is the public sector, and this will be people like the Departments of Transportation, the U.S. Forest Service, and people like the city and state governments. Our second sector will be the private sector, and this is going to be people like construction companies, transportation companies, and more. The military sector will be broken down into the Army Corps of Engineers, the Coast Guard, the National Guard, and then the classic armed forces branches of Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Colorado will be our first manufacturing facility. But some things that many of you may not know is that Colorado has 60 million tires or 1.3 billion pounds of tires in storage. It's pretty shocking to hear that it's the worst polluting state in the United States. So we've chosen that as our first manufacturing facility and we're gonna generate $20 million in revenue out of that facility. We're then gonna copy that facility and move to strategic locations across the United States. We have some great demonstration units and they come in fantastic colors. Here you can see sand beige, forest brown, and midnight black. And as far as weight goes, we have units that go all the way up to 800 pounds. Our leadership team is well experienced and covers major areas of recycling, finance, business development, as well as manufacturing. So with all that said, I'd like to wrap us up and say thank you very much for attending our presentation today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to connecting with you all in the future. Hi, my name is Sebastian. I'm the founder and CEO of Arclet. Arclet is an innovation company working on developing new technologies to turn the unrecyclable plastics into efficient materials for the built environment. At this point, everybody is aware about the big issue plastics are creating in the environment. But that 50% is showing that more than half of the plastic products that we use and discard every day are considered as unrecyclables under existing technologies. This is, of course, a great environmental impact, but it's also a huge economic impact for plastic waste generators. Private companies and municipalities having to pay to landfill or incinerate these materials. So at Arclight, we've developed a new technology that can take care of all plastics, even that 50%. And the good thing is that we can do it at a cost which is competitive to landfilling. So of course, our products are sustainable, 100% made of recycled plastics. 
They are efficient, taking the best of plastic polymers, light, durable, safe, long lasting, right? And they're also a scale solution. And the very first product in our pipeline, it's Arclight Smart Gravel. So why scale and why smart? Because you can use it in many different applications. One, you can create lighter and better insulated concrete for the construction industry and also precast concrete elements. Being lighter means that they are going to reduce costs in transportation and installation. And being great insulator means savings in air conditioning and heating for houses. Used as a filler in drainage layer for landscaping projects, football fields, golf courses, and even green rooftops, help for better drainage and also diverting thousands of tons of plastic from the environment. Arclight Smart Gravel is also a great substrate for hydroponic growing and also for home gardening projects. So you can check on smart.arclight.com about how you can use it at your place. Everything started in 2015 with a small pilot facility we installed in Buenos Aires, Argentina. In 2019, we got to market and now we're selling every ton of gravel we produce to all these different markets. Now we're bringing that technology to the US and we're installing a 10 times bigger facility in Orange County, California. It's gonna be ready for operations in December of this year. For next year, we have already committed a license to be installed in Paris, France, and it's going to be operated by one of the biggest concrete companies in the world. So traction, we are selling in Argentina. We have the first pre-sales in Argentina, and we got great strategic investors and partners trusting our client. In the next years, we plan to grow through a combined model of services and products. Right now, we are offering the recycling service to these big plastic waste generators. We're manufacturing and selling Arclight Smart Gravel, and we are also offering licenses to take this technology to every city around the world. Next to come on the pipeline and on the based on the same technology, smart fibers and plastic bricks for emergency housing. Of course, nothing of this could be done without a passion-driven team behind. The team is very diverse, and we got experts in environment, experts in sustainable concrete, experts in financials and PR, and in R&D and machine design. So let's talk about impact, the impact we are already creating and the impact we want to create in the next coming years. By 2021, we will be diverting 50 million pounds of plastic from the environment. That's going to be raising to half a million pounds in 2023, and it's going to reach 1.7 billion pounds by 2025. So we're already solving the problem of plastic one ton at a time. And because we're an innovation company, we're looking always for new resources, new ideas, and new support. So we invite you to join us on the journey to help us scale the impact and multiply it across the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Heritage Group. You guys have been amazing. Thank you, Heritage Group. You're awesome. Best love partners ever. Heritage Group, it's been a great experience. Nice work, Heritage Group. Enjoyed it a ton. Thank you, Heritage Group. It's been a fantastic journey. Thank you, Heritage Group. You are awesome. Thank you. Thank you to the Heritage Group. It's been an honor to be with you this whole time. Yeah, thanks, Heritage Group. This was great. Thanks for everything. It's been great, Heritage Group. Thank you so much for your support. It's been an honor. Great. Thank you, Heritage Group. Thank you for the hospitality, Heritage Group. Thanks to Heritage Group for this life-changing experience. It's been awesome. So Techstars team, Heritage Group team, thank you very much for opening all your resources and your hearts to us. Thank you to the Heritage Group for your partnership. It's been awesome. I want to thank Techstars and Heritage Group more broadly for the opportunity to work in an accelerator. Thank you, Heritage Group, for making this year incredible for all of our founders. Uh, so I'm grateful from the bottom of my heart for the opportunity. And more importantly, I want to say how important it is to have these kind of entrepreneurship ecosystems uh, in the hard tech space, just because there's so little of them. Most of them are where the supply chains are. Um, so price of it's Asia, right? Maybe parts of Latin America, but for the most part, Asia. Uh, so it is a godsend to have a program like this, uh, especially for a company at my stage. We're very, very early stage. There really aren't that many incubators out there, if any at all. 
And despite the fact that this is probably meant to be an accelerator, and by probably, I mean, I know it is, I've had the fortune of being at the essentially incubator stage to develop ideas with Scott, Ginger, and the rest of the team. Uh, and it's been life-changing, to say at least, especially during a pandemic. Um, so again, thank you so much for the opportunity. I look forward to engaging you guys even more now that I have more materials uh, beyond the initial very small pitch deck that I had when I first started off. Uh, cheers. It's rare to see a female in the construction industry. Well, I'm a rare bird. I built a construction company from scratch. One thing that kept me up at night, permit compliance. Access to regulations is not easy. Information is bound up in government websites, company spreadsheets, or worse, inside an expert's head. Keeping up is exhausting. Hi, I'm Rebecca Antonino, CEO and co-founder of Permits.com. We are a compliance platform that serves as a single source of truth for companies to standardize compliance and track inspections. Millions of permits are applied for every year. It's a legal obligation for every single industry. And getting it wrong means billions in dollars, fines, rework, and lost opportunities. It doesn't matter if you get things right 99% of the time, it matters when you get one wrong. I experienced this firsthand with my construction company. It's why I built permits.com. Make no mistake, one compliance failure can be catastrophic. Some companies don't survive. Risks are high for every industry, whether it's air, water, land, manufacturing, pharma, or construction. All industries, permits are mandatory Regulation's critical, and currently it's at a $32 billion a year on com compliance management, and it's only growing. At Permits.com, we built a solution for compliance departments in any industry. One central location, gain real-time visibility, mitigate risk, and learn through efficiency. Our dashboard views display compliance at your fingertips in real time. See all your permits make informed decisions, and act quickly when warnings appear. We make money three ways, per transaction, subscription, and licensing our platform to large organizations. Our technology has guarded over 5,000 permits, served over 1,600 companies, and collected data from 19,000 government entities. This year, I'm excited to share we are cash flow positive. Now we're productizing our features and next year we're off to the races with a subscription model, release to an enterprise platform, and by Q3 we begin licensing data sets that predict cost, turnaround times, and much more. I gotta say, we're a team that gets shit done. This isn't our first rodeo. The same team launched my construction company 10 years ago. We took seven years of construction spreadsheets, our compliance knowledge, and we built permits.com. Here's the simple truth. We all wanna live and work in safe, beautiful communities. And permitting plays an important role. But somewhere along the way, we've made it really hard. And it doesn't have to be. Permits.com, how permit compliance should be. Thank you. Roads. We all use them, whether it's for our daily commute, distribution of goods, or a family vacation. Roads take us there and back again. They are at the basis of our modern society and are crucial for economic growth and prosperity. It is therefore of the utmost importance that we take care of our roads and repair them when needed. Hi, I'm yours, and I'm the CEO of Rodeo. At Rodeo, we enable asset managers and anyone involved in road construction or road maintenance to save up to 30% on their budget by giving them real-time information on road quality and on the asset's future maintenance needs. Until now, road maintenance and inspection have been highly inefficient. Most of the repair and renewal is done periodically or even worse, based on incidents. 
This reactive approach leads to a very time-consuming, labor-intensive, and costly operation. Every country spends billions on managing road performance, maintenance, and construction every year. But is that all spent wisely when you're always one step behind? At Rodeo, we figured there had to be a better way to do this, and we found it. We created a platform that leverages a variety of big data sets to come up with highly accurate real-time road quality insights. This location-based data is collected from satellites, smartphones, and even smart cars. Rodeo then merges that info into one clear and accurate data set, showing the state of the asset in real time. Rodeo can check any road anywhere at any time and deliver crucial information on the quality of roads to enable better and more efficient planning of road maintenance, avoiding unnecessary renewal. Physical road inspections can now be deployed with laser focus because Rodeo will tell them exactly where to look. But we don't just stop there. Rodeo has also created an algorithm that can accurately predict the asset's future maintenance needs. Now, predictive analysis has already revolutionized manufacturing and logistics, and Rodeo now takes it to the civil engineering industry. With an effortless user experience, our platform will deliver the critical information on any stretch of road at the touch of a button. Our approach will help asset managers and industry stakeholders around the world to boost their efficiency and save up to a staggering 30% on their road maintenance budget by spending less on inspections, labor, and materials. Rodeo also drives sustainability goals by lowering CO2 emissions, water usage, and road downtime while improving road safety and ride comfort. The Rodeo platform offers an annual subscription to look at your area of choice where pricing is based on grid size. We have established a diverse team of experts in satellite sciences, data sciences, machine learning, and civil engineering. Our founders, Alex, Lily, and myself, combine over 45 years of experience in science, management, and entrepreneurship. And we firmly believe that this will contribute to the success of our endeavors. In 2017, we proved our concept with our customers. And soon after that, we started an incubation program with the European Space Agency. We achieved profitability in a, as a consultancy in 2019 and gained traction throughout the industry in Europe while working with some of the largest asset managers there. This year, we decided to change our business model into a B2B SaaS during a global pandemic. And we are now participating in two leading accelerator programs one of which is the Techstars Heritage Group Accelerator. The other one is ESA's Copernicus program. Our platform is set to launch in 2021, where we will achieve nationwide coverage in multiple countries and partner with departments of transportation throughout the US. It has been my pleasure to give you this glimpse of what Rodeo is all about and where we're headed. We're confident that what we offer is the optimum solution to this global problem. If you do too, we'd love to connect with you. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Ricardo Corona, the CEO of Magnamer Compounds, where we develop sustainable plastic solutions at scale. Why, why are we doing this? Um, don't need to go into too much depth, but we know plastic is a massive problem in the environment. There's over 8 million tons of plastic that are deposited on an annual basis in the ocean. Every year we consume the equivalent of one credit card's worth of microplastics and nanoplastics. Uh, these are forever compounds that build up on your body year after year. And there's a massive garbage patch in the Pacific with over 79k tons of plastic. Needless to say, the environment is suffering, our health is, is going to suffer in the long run from these threats. We know that sustainable plastics are critical. They are the solution to overcome these health challenges, environmental pollution issues. And this market's growing at a 50% year-over-year -year basis. It's not going away. We need plastics no matter what. What are we doing? We are commercializing PHA at scale. PHA is a sustainable alternative to petroleum-based plastics derived from feedstocks processed by bacteria, extracted by us. Why PHA? It is biodegradable which means it's broken down by organisms that are alive. It's biocompatible, which means that it's not toxic to us or other organisms. It's absorbed by the human body and it's versatile, which is critical in making sure that we can replace other petroleum plastics. Why hasn't it happened already? 
Uh, there's been attempts since the 1990s and over and over again, there are massive adoption issues. The biggest one being cost. Typically these materials are two to four times more expensive than your traditional petroplastic. Also, it's really, really hard to meet the specs of very well refined, well world processed applications for petroplastics. So what have we been doing? Um, I, even though I'm the CEO of Animar Compounds, I see myself really as a chief detective. My job was to really trace down what happened over the past 30, 30 years in the market that led to this dysfunction. These polymers are known, they've been explored, they're ancient, archaic, and yet they don't work when they meet market. Why is that? My use case, my thesis for this is that peak oil was what disrupted this industry. And I got that advice from my mentors in PHA and bioplastics. I understand that the issue was that the prognostics for peak oil led people to believe that we could actually produce cheap bioplastics, not using petroleum byproducts. This was not the case. Peak oil was incorrect. Um, we are going to be using methane to create PHAs. We're doing this because this is the cheapest way, the most scalable way, and the most refined way to produce PHA. Our market goal is to make sure we get PHA to commercial scale. That's it. And there's at least 90 years worth of natural gas reserves all over the world that we will make advantage. PHA commercialization at scale is not easy. It's failed over and over. As I mentioned, in the 1990s, metabolics tried it, got really far, ran out of money even after the IP hooked. Um, new light mango materials and dynamers are the newer recent generation of bioplastic companies producing PHA, but they're also taking the wrong approach. They ruined the, long, the wrong lessons from the peak oil crisis and the peak oil diagnostic that happened in the 90s. Uh, some companies are trying to take waste gases and scale those. Some other companies are trying to use the same vegetable oil, oil processes to refine and produce PHA. Same issue, it won't scale properly because it is too expensive into the laboratories to do so. There will either be a crisis of affordability or scalability, both of which are not mutually exclusive. We see PHA as a massive opportunity because it could be a thermoplastic, an engineering elastomer, a rigid thermoplastic, and most importantly, it's biodegradable. Other products like PLA cannot compete with that. And there's over 150 monomers and 20 or 30 copolymers that can do this. They can replace seven of the world's top 10 petroleum plastics. Because of that, the market is massive. There is a 654 billion plastic market that could in theory be met by PHA once it's engineered to do so. We recognize we are a really small player in this game. And we kind of see ourselves initially going into the single use plastic space. Um, this is a $65 million market and we hope to grow time over time. Our milestones are small. We are a very young company. We're currently going through the incorporation process, figuring out all those logistics and details. And so our simple, simple goal is to make sure that we scale PHA early on and we find the right microbes and we found and identified them already. So now it's just about finding the right partners. We can scale that research and do so, do so in a high throughput way. Um, and then afterwards, we'll go through commercialization strategies and scale up. These aren't mutually exclusive, but the main goal right now is a technical one. Our team is experienced. We've done this for over 100 years in total in developing plastics and PHA specifically. Uh, we have Dr. Yossi Shaptai and Alan Padua who are what I would call those stage the grandfathers of PHA. They've done this. Yossi has scaled PHA from nothing to 50,000 tons per year, the largest initiative effort to date. Uh, and Alan has developed biocatalysts and systems and applications to get PHA to market. They've done it. They've seen what's going wrong and they've taught us the right lessons. And so that's what they're in the team. Long story short, we're excited for all the use cases for PHA. And we do see a long-term plan, which we could reduce emissions, reduce other contaminants, but our goal is to scale pH and get it to market. Thank you for your time. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Welcome to the future, where industrial waste streams are transformed into reusable resources. Manufacturers are great at supplying us with the products we love to buy and making them with the qualities we desire. Unfortunately, manufacturing our favorite products creates more waste than these brands could ever manage sustainably. We want their goods, but we demand they act responsibly with the world's resources. Today, much of their waste ends up in your local landfill, in your drinking water, and even in the air you breathe. This problem gets bigger and bigger, and there's no end in sight. 
So why is there so much waste and why don't we do better? Well, just like in this picture, a considerable amount of this waste is multimedia, which is just a fancy way of saying they're a blend of liquids and solids. These waste streams are extremely difficult to manage because they are a complex mixture of chemicals like oil and solvents mixed with solids like metal and plastic. And waste management can be very, very expensive. But what if we could unlock the liquids from the solids in the waste stream? Well, at Mobile Fluid Recovery, that is precisely what we do. My name is Justin Edmondson. I am the CEO of Mobile Fluid Recovery, and I have a passion for converting trash into cash. For 20 plus years, my focus has been on converting waste into reusable products. Our team pioneered the circular economy way before that term even existed. Our technology has been used for over a decade, solving some of the worst man-made waste issues in our country. Heritage used our technology to recycle oil boom in the BP spill cleanup. Oil boom is that orange material floating on the water in this picture. We have many Fortune 500 customers and have recently unlocked the ability for rapid growth to provide our platform on a global scale. We recycle multimedia waste byproducts, including oil absorbents, solvent wipes, and swarf. I'll explain that last one in just a minute. As this slide shows, we use our patented process to unlock the oil from absorbent pads. These pads are designed to be used one time and then tossed, but we enable them to be used multiple times before recycling them. Swarf is a mixture of small metal particles and coolants, like oil. According to waste management, this type of material is their number one problem waste stream in the United States. And Eaton Corporation has been trying to find a way to recycle it for 14 years. They listened to dozens of unsuccessful pitches. Some were too expensive, some required an enormous amount of plant space, and others just not effective. Well, we solved that problem and were awarded a long-term contract at Eaton Corporation's largest U.S. facility. We are now saving them over a half a million dollars per year. We are expanding with Eaton into additional facilities in the U.S. and in Mexico. So how are we gonna turn this into a profitable business? Well, all of the nation's major disposal companies are distributors of mobile fluid recovery. We will leverage these relationships to penetrate their customer base with a focus on our technology. In 20 years, industrial waste as we know it will cease to exist. Mobile fluid recovery will convert all of it into something of beneficial reuse. The U.S. market for industrial waste will be $20 billion by 2027. And we are currently recycling 30% of it or $6 billion. The EPA estimates that we can reclaim 75%. That represents another $9 billion in market potential. There are so many opportunities to turn trash into cash. We are already tackling some of the most challenging waste streams. Our services are a unique combination of mobile, in-plant, and fixed facility. We project a run rate of $3 million in 2021 and over $7 million in 2023. Throughout our careers, our team pioneered the circular economy way before that term even existed. We were the first to convert multiple waste streams into viable commodities. In many cases, we created the market to buy our customers' waste. These markets have saved our customers well over $100 million. Mobile fluid recovery is in an excellent position to continue our disruptive process to solve the waste problems realized by our current customer base and leverage this position to become a global leader of the circular economy. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mike Filipakis, CEO of Mflux, and we're creating a connected network for industrial job site intelligence. 
So my background is in the construction industry. I studied construction management at Ohio State, and I worked for the, one of the nation's top general contractors, Turner Construction, for about a decade out of college. I've seen a wide variety of projects, from mega hospitals in the Midwest to data centers on the West Coast. I've seen big, small, and in between. Every job that I was ever on, the success of our project was predicated on us being able to understand what was happening from our project, being able to capture the data that was coming from our project. This allowed us to make informed decisions about our overall project bottom line, about the project schedule to stay on time, and of course about our workers' safety. The way we captured this data was difficult because the project is a constantly changing, uh, evolving machine where what, no one line of sight remains constant. So what happens is it becomes someone's task to go capture this data. Someone has to go around with a camera and capture pictures or with an iPad and the spreadsheets to in manually in input this data. And all the while they're being tasked with a, a myriad of different platforms and programs that they have to use to try to capture this data. So eventually it, it falls off. It just doesn't get done when it's someone's job. Mflux is bringing an automated approach to this data capture. What if this data could be brought directly to your fingertips? With our network and our platform, we evolve with every step of the job site. We move with your job site. We're there for every step of data capture. We have that existing essential infrastructure uh, that can be there for, for, for from ground break until punch list. So how are we doing this? How are we able to evolve and move with the job site? Well, we're doing it with something that's fundamental to every project, something that's mandated by OSHA, and that's the lighting system. So we've built our battery powered lights that can stay lit for weeks at a time without needing a recharge. We've connected them to the internet and we're, they're mobile, they're portable. So they move around your job site uh, with every step. We really imagine our lights as a Trojan horse to bring in other technologies to job sites. So you imagine our lights as nodes on a network. The more lights that we have on a job, the stronger our network becomes. We can control our lights remotely, put them on timers, turn them on and off. This allows us to save 70% of the electrical power draw compared to traditional lighting. If someone walks on our job site at midnight, we get a security notification where theft on job sites is a big issue. So we're able to kind of be that eyes and ears on your job site. From there, we want to understand what those motion events look like, really add to that layer of security with photos, but also those photos can act as progress photos to understand the historical progression of your project. From there, we really wanna double down on that connectivity piece and create a Wi-Fi mesh network on job sites where connectivity has traditionally been an issue. Our traction uh, is, we're very excited about our traction to these early stages, uh, being able to work with some of the biggest names in the industry. Uh, from my time, um, knowing a lot of these names and knowing those sales cycles has really allowed us access to some of these biggest jobs. Uh, we have all of our lights rented out until April. Uh, we're with the Techstars and Heritage Group program right now, working on a fundraise to, to be, build more lights and inventory to meet that demand. Uh, and we have uh, a great, some great bids in that would take uh, hundreds of our lights um, well into 2022. So the exciting part about all this traction and what we're finding early on, a lot of this demand is coming just for our lighting, just for uh, the lighting system that provides value. And we really haven't even gotten to the core of what we can do with our software platform. So why is the lighting important and why are they looking for a new way to lighting? Well, the traditional way we light our, our buildings with the string lighting system is expensive, dangerous, and wasteful. You imagine a bundle of wires and strings on your job site that you have to roll out, get on ladders, and string up, similar to Christmas lights on your Christmas tree. Uh, well, the, the ladders and the wires create slip, trip, and fall hazards, which are the number one safety incident on construction projects. The lights are on all the time, wasting energy, as I mentioned earlier. And after the jobs are cut down and thrown away, very wasteful. So we're focused on this construction industry early on. We're seeing some early product market fit. We know there's a huge opportunity there, but we're also aware that there's lots of other industries like oil and gas and mining and disaster relief that have a need for our product. This is the founding team that's excited to bring this product to you, both construction industry experience and start, uh, hardware or uh, startup experience, both with um, uh, operations and product scaling. So very excited to present Mflux to you. Thank you very much. Well, we've done it. Thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your day and watching this. I'm super excited that you got to experience just a little bit of these amazing founders. Again, I want to say thank you to the Heritage Group. I want to say thanks to Techstars, Nancy, Ryan, and our amazing team. I'm super thrilled that you got to spend a little bit of time with these folks. They have more to tell. They want to share their story with you, so please reach out. We've given you a lot of ways to do that, and they can't wait to hear from you. So thank you again. We'll see you next year.